uh, and you see the quote uh, there from uh, June Jordan. To tell the truth is to become beautiful, to begin to love yourself, value yourself, and that's political in its most profound way. Uh, we, we understand the, the axiom from uh, uh, the feminist movement, the person who is political and uh, bisexuality uh, is, is um, uh, not an exception in that regard slide. So I want to start at um, this very interesting beginning. Oftentimes you, you will hear in these conversations uh, on sexuality uh, uh, a um, framing that, uh, for lack of a better uh, term, is Eurocentric. Uh, it's a situating of, of human sexuality in some place in Europe. Um, usually we'll start with some Greek folks. Uh, but we're going to do things differently here, not just because uh, I'm a brown person, but because um, truth is as, as truth does. So I um, want to situate um, this, this beginning of the conversation in ancient Egypt, otherwise known as uh, Kemet, uh, with the stella from the tombs of Ni'ank Khnum and Khnum Hatep. Um, there, uh, in the last maybe five years, there's been a discussion about um, these two men who uh, were entombed together. Um, they were a member. They were members of the royal court, uh, chief manicurists uh, for the um, uh, the Neb or the Sutin, the Pharaoh, uh, buried together. And um, the debate uh, stemmed around the classification of these individuals as uh, gay or homosexual. Uh, because they were buried together and because they were, uh, which is unique um, for uh, two men in, the, in this context, and as well in um, uh, their stella, you see them in affectionate embrace. Uh, these two men uh, also uh, had wives. The wives um, were, uh, there's evidence of them having wives. And, and so the debate stemmed around, okay, well, are they gay or are they, are they homosexual or are they heterosexual? Without a, a um, even consideration that there could be something other than them being uh, homosexual or heterosexual, uh, that being uh, um, the, what we classify today as bisexual or pansexual or polysexual. Next slide. <coughs> And so that brings us to this notion of um, bi right? and also the, the one drop rule, the, which are empowered by these two concepts, heteronormativity and homonormativity. So uh, heteronormativity, uh, this um, belief in the normality of a heterosexual existence as an a priori assumption. Uh, that thing that uh, um, is unquestioned, that is what we would naturally assume, and it and around that are all kinds of values and um, prejudices and assumptions around what that looks like, what heterosexuality looks like. Right. With the rise of the quote unquote gay liberation movement or the um, LGBTQ uh, liberation movement, we have also this notion of homo. So this a priori assumption uh, uh, about uh, um, the homosexual nature of anyone who doesn't fit into the heterosexual box, All right. this, unquestioning, this unquestioned belief, um, and all kinds of values, prejudices, and assumptions around what, uh, what it means to be homosexual and what that looks like. Uh, the one drop rule concept comes from our understanding of um, uh, race and ethnicity in the United States, such that uh, at, at one point, if you had a, uh, um, any um, uh, ancestor that you could point to, or, or that could be pointed to, because uh, usually it was other people pointing, <laughs> not you, uh, uh, so your self-determination was out the door, uh, but if you had an ancestor that someone else could point to that was black, that was of African descent, then you were considered black. You were tainted by um, the blood uh, of that ancestor. 
uh, and and that then led you into a, a a position within that hierarchy of white supremacy and racist and uh, racist politics that uh, within the United States. This one drop rule uh, um, concept can be applied to sexuality. So if one has ever had uh, um, uh, uh, a uh, quote unquote same sex or uh, um, uh, same gender sexual experience, one then is is put into the homosexual or gay uh, uh, um, barrel. Um, so these notions of heteronormativity and homonormativity contribute to the erasure of people's full sexuality. That's what bi, bi erasure really is about, is the, is the erasing or the minimizing or the marginalizing of, of people's full sexuality. Next slide. Uh, we see this in, in the context of our understanding of Europe as well, uh, uh, with uh, the, the way, with the ways in which we handle the simultaneous or combined same sex or same gender relationships with the quote unquote opposite sex or different sex, different gender relationships that uh, quote unquote ancient Greeks had. Next slide. And again, next slide. Did you go back or you went forward? You went forward? No, keep going, no. Yeah, next slide. Um, so uh, indigenous people around the world, including uh, uh, quote unquote Native Americans uh, or the um, indigenous people of, of this uh, continent, uh, did not struggle with these issues, but came, came to terms with them in, in various uh, ways of constructing uh, both gender and sexuality. The notion of um, the two-spiritedness, um, the, for those of you who are familiar with that concept, is one of the, is one of the ways in which indigenous people uh, dealt with the complexity of both gender and, uh, and sexuality. Next slide. Uh, Black and blue, bisexuality, and the politics of respectability, and, and uh, oh, sorry, uh, um, erotophobia, and the politics of respectability. So uh, um, we see also in uh, um, from a social historical context the the ways in which uh, the politics of respectability. In other words, what uh, what good people do, what moral people do, what um, is handled in polite society as compared to that other stuff, uh, um, has this very interesting relationship between both race and class uh, um, and, uh, and sexuality throughout history. Uh, and uh, it does so in ways that, that raises this concept of erot erotophobia. So the uh, the making suspect that which is con con considered to be erotic or sensual or of the body. Uh, next slide. Uh, and we see this in the um, prosecution and persecution of, of Oscar Wilde and, uh, in his, uh, uh, his ability to own his sexuality as a uh, middle, uh, uh, middle class bourgeois European uh, uh, man and in polite society. Uh, and as well, we see that in, uh, uh, in other forms, next slide, throughout the US context. So for example, um, Bessie Smith, uh, who is considered the queen or empress of, of the blues. So this, this putting together, lumping together um, the uh, the masses of poor people, working class people, um, people of color, women, uh, bisexuals, these people who are led by their desires and uh, um, are therefore in need of control, confinement, regulation, um, all, these, all these kinds of social policies because 
uh, they are too invested in their desires. They, they are too libidinal, or they are um, too nihilistic, or they are too, um, uh, too governed by the senses, the erotic. Um, if, you, if you know anything about blues music, blues music is a uh, um, African American uh, cultural mu uh, musical cultural form that actually has its its basis in both the spiritual component of life uh, for uh, um, people of African descent. This belief that one could experience pain and still find joy in that, um, and, and the nest the the need. Uh, um, to find joy when you are being oppressed, when you are being marginalized, the, the need to uh, um, rub your belly up against somebody in, 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 in the blue light or the dark of the night uh, as a spiritual erotic practice or spiritual sensual practice is very important. Uh, next slide. Uh, also, this notion of liminality uh, comes into play when, when talking about what we're uh, calling bisexuality or pansexuality, polysexuality. So liminality is this space of in-between, um, what Gloria Anzudula would call the borderlands or nepatla. All right. uh, this generative, creative, um, complex and chaotic space that boundaries of two or more worlds um, is, uh, uh, is one that also comes up when we're talking about uh, bisexuality. This understanding that one could be um, not both, uh, but neither, right? and sit in that space and, and, and hear from these different worlds and be able to incorporate the, the wisdom uh, um, of integration. In those two in those two worlds um, is the the concept that uh, Gloria again Gloria Anzudula who's a um, bi um, scholar was a bi scholar activist um, editor writer uh, what she uh, uh, termed this ability to, to exist and live within liminal space and find it a place of nourishment as opposed to finding it a threatening or hostile or, uh, or antagonistic space. Uh, the dagger people of Burkina Faso uh, have a concept called bodeme, uh, which are also uh, border crossers, uh, and as well people who uh, have quote unquote heterosexual um, relationships in terms of marriage, and who also practice uh, same-sex um, sexual practices in the context of a, a spiritual uh, commitment that they have to the community. So in other words, uh, their sex is tied to the survival of the community. <coughs> and this sex is uh, um, uh, most often same-sex. The same, their same-sex practice is tied to the survival of the community or in a spiritual metaphysical uh, realm. These individuals are also uh, um, folks who uh, engage in heterosexual relationships like uh, um, marriage. Um, the, um, some of the literature, um, is, some, in some of the literature, you'll find the concept of Bodeme um, used as gatekeeper and it's from the work of Dr. Maladoma Somme, who's a, a member of the uh, Dagger community. Um, but it's this, this notion of being in the liminal space. Next slide. And from Gloria Antidula's work, I am a wind swayed bridge, a crossroads inhabited by whirlwinds. You say my name is ambivalence. Think of me as Shiva a many-armed and legged body with one foot on brown soil, one on white, one in straight society, one in the gay world, the man's world, the women's, one limb in the literary world, another in the working class, the socialist and the occult worlds. 
a sort of spider woman hanging by one thin strand of web, who, me confused, ambivalent, not so, only your labels split me. Next slide. Um, that's Gloria. Next slide. Uh, and so um, we deal with these assumptions of uh, sexuality and, uh, and the categorical uh, imposition the imposition of categories on uh, what is, uh, for many of us, complex uh, and rich and generative and boundless. Uh, and so I think I'll leave you with that as you continue to listen to the other presentations, uh, to think about the boundless complexity of good sex. Thank <laughs> you.